What's good folks, it's Nightmare Frame here with a new Warframe video talking about our latest primed Warframe. I am the epitome of immortality. Wukong, the undying. <laughs> Nothing can stand in my way. Okay, what's up? For those who've been living under rock for the past two weeks, um, surprise? After the rework, he was undoubtedly going to be the next prime Warframe. They had to push poor Atlas aside. I did cover the rework in detail with all the abilities and interactions alongside some tips and tricks and released three build videos. You should definitely go check those out. Unfortunately, he isn't as immortal as he was. Kinda sad they nerfed Defy, but what's done is done. So what are the differences between the Prime and the normal variant? For starters, he looks damn sexy. Look at the skin. Gorgeous design. They put more work into this than the Equinox Prime. Yeah, I said it. Well, in terms of... The Warframe, not the accessories. I'm still kind of salty about the Equinox Prime. And talking about accessories, are Wukong's Prime accessories worth it? Um, in my opinion, not at all. First of all, unfortunately, not many people use Kubros, but the skin is so damn good. That's the sad part, because Kavats and Sentinels dominate. By the way, still waiting for the Helminth Kavat. Hint, hint. Wink, wink. Nudge, nudge. DE. Secondly, the Cyandana is so stiff and it doesn't match Wukong at all. And lastly, the Prime Ephemera is just some particles orbiting him. Nothing special. This is basically the Prime Ephemera. I'm sorry, but I feel no effort was put into it. But yeah, everything else... 100%, 10 out of 10, the weapons and the prime, love them. So the changes are pretty minuscule, 25 extra armor, 10 more energy, 20 extra shields, and increase the sprint speed by 0.05. That's pretty bad, but it's something. And I got three crazy type of Wukong builds for ya. Before we get into it, I do have to warn you, I have an Aura Forma, so if you're wondering about the different polarities, well, that's the reason. I shall start off with the first controversial build for the Monkey King. For those who love Wukong and want to take him anywhere for any type of mission, especially missions that require crowd control. Oh yeah, Celestial Stomp. I actually found a good use for this augment. There are some setbacks to this augment, and that being the stun duration doesn't scale off of duration mods. Hmm. This mod works pretty much like Rhino Stomp, it CCs everything in its AoE. So with your clone activated, you hold down the ability to stomp. Usually this will despawn the clone, but with the augment equipped, it will stomp instead. In the aura, I have enemy radar. The aura doesn't really matter, I really like this aura, just so I can see where all the enemies are coming from and great for enemy pathing. I have my range at 250% with the help of Cutting Drift, Overextended, and Stretch. I have two strength mods, Umbral Intensify and Transient Fortitude to counteract the negative strength of Overextended. Since Wukong's clone's health scales off of power and health, I also have Vitality because we don't want our clone getting randomly one-shotted all the time. Fleeting Expertise for 60% efficiency with negative duration, primed continuity to counter Counteract the negative duration from fleeting, and also to have some duration for our second ability. And lastly, the augment itself, Celestial Stomp. In the Arcane's department, I have Energize to replenish energy from energy pickups, and Guardian for 600 extra armor when we take hits. And the Arcane's will remain the same throughout the three builds. Very fun build that can be taken pretty much anywhere. This puts my Index Wukong build to shame because it's even more effective. With the 250% range, your Cloudwalker becomes another great crowd control tool for engaging and disengaging, stunning everything it makes contact with. And the stun duration is set. Even with a negative duration, it won't affect it at all. And now for those who don't know, well, now you're gonna know, Wukong is currently the fastest Warframe around. The second build is all about his second ability. 
Cloudwalker. You're already fast when using this ability, so think of it like Volt Speed. It can be boosted even further, but unlike Volt Speed, it doesn't scale off of power, but off of Sprint Mods and Duration. In the Aura, I have Sprint Boost for that 15% Sprint Speed. To boost the Aura just a little bit, I'll be running Coaction Drift. And now, taking it even further with Rush in the Exilus, Armored Agility, and Speed Drift. And since we don't care much about range or crowd control, I will stack this to the max with duration mods. Narrow-minded, primed continuity, constitution, and auger message. And finally, streamline for some efficiency. To be honest, you can actually replace streamline with any mod you like. Super fun build if you don't get stuck in, in tight, narrow maps. That, that's quite annoying. And also if you're tired of uh, taking the casual speed frames. All right, saving the best for last, the all-rounder the Undying Monkey Boy of Doom build. This is a similar variant to the one I showcased in my Wukong reworked build, but I swapped out one mod for the augment. Steel Charge is mandatory if you're going to be running around with Iron Staff to increase melee damage by 60% and it also boosts the mod capacity for this particular build. Handspring in the X-List for that 160% knockdown recovery, it's a massive layer of defense, trust me. I say this a lot, the less time you spend on your butt, the more time you can be up and about killing things and not taking a lot of damage. You can use Prime Surefooted if you have that mod, so yeah, that also works. Prime Continuity for a nice chunk of duration, perfect for Cloudwalker's travel distance as it's based off of duration, and great to gather as many enemies as possible for your defy. Prime Flow for the juicy energy pool that lets you use all his abilities with ease, especially paired alongside Hunter Adrenaline. This mod is here to convert 45% of your health damage into energy. In higher level missions, you won't run into energy trouble from all the damage you take left and right. Umbral Intensify and Vitality combined gives you that nice boost to both your health and power strength. The power and health is needed for your clone's health multiplier, and the power is also good for your Defy's armor multiplier and Iron Staff's damage. To increase the Staff's damage even more, I will be using the Augment Primal Rage. Basically, every time you kill an enemy, you increase the critical chance, which caps at 150%. If you don't kill anything for a while, it will start to decay by 1% each time. The crit scales of a power strength and the decay rate is reduced with duration. Adaptation for some added defenses, especially with some decent amount of health and armor, this will give you some nice damage reduction. And since I want to make him even more immortal, I am using quick thinking. Unfortunately, Wukong will use up all of his three immortality tricks first before quick thinking triggers. So this mod is there after you use up all three. Quick thinking will drain energy with 240% efficiency when you take a lethal hit instead of letting you die. And with the nice amount of armor and energy you have, it will reduce the drain even more. And when you know quick thinking is triggered, you can immediately use your second ability to heal up and set yourself up for the attack. If you aren't into endurance runs and all that, you can replace this slot with Gladiator Resolve or Gladiator Aegis for more health or armor, which also gives you the set bonus effect. The bonus effect for mods with the gladiator prefix will increase your crit chance when you build up your melee combo counter. Alright, the fun part. Moving on to the Iron Staff modded for crit and corrosive. Acolyte mods did not work on exalted weapons, so unfortunately you cannot use blood rush or weeping wounds and etc. Instead for more crits, I will run Sacrificial Steel. Berserker for the attack speed increase. For the elements, I have a corrosive build, but viral works just as fine. For viral, you would need to rely a lot more on an armor stripping weapon that spreads statuses like a Zocti. The impact does overpower the slash but with a decent status chance, you will get those slash procs. No probs. I have both dual stat elemental mods to make corrosive, each mod giving me 60% elemental damage and 60% status chance. Paired with Drifting Contact for 40% a more status chance and 10% combo duration. I will have 78% status chance on my Iron Staff. Primed Reach, which makes this staff extend to insane lengths, able to hit multiple targets with one swing. Condition Overload makes this weapon deal even more damage for 60% melee damage for each status type affecting the target. Mmm, juicy. If you pair that up with a juicy Zocti build, then all hell will break loose. To increase the crits we dish out, I will be mostly using my Deconstructor Prime on my Helios. 
as a stat stick with three gladiator mods. And since I have a corrosive build on my iron staff, I will run with a radiation and viral on my Zakti. Simple and straightforward build, a lot of elements and multi-shot. Radiation causes confusion, viral reduces enemies health and Zakti has innate gas, a third element. And it also has a stagger effect, so condition overload will surely be thankful for the juicy treat you just offered it. So these are my three Wukong Prime builds. Fun, crazy and somewhat interesting any way you want to take it. This is like what my fifth Wukong video. So I wanted to keep it compact with all the juice. I was actually thinking of not doing this video, but I'm glad I did. So I do hope you've enjoyed this video. And if you did, feel free to leave a like, share and subscribe for more Warframe content and so much more. Do refer to the description. Be sure to also join the discord. Thanks for watching. And as always, peace.